here's Brody Brazil. In this video, I'm going to share in extensive detail the vocal audio chain I use here for my remote streaming package. Now, this is a kit I bring with me to places like the conference room at work. Acoustically, not treated at all. In fact, generally, it sounds terrible. However, I think I've got the right tools and I've harnessed them in the right way to get a pretty decent sound out of this. So first off, let me begin with the equipment of choice. The microphone is the Sennheiser MKH416. Specifically because it gives me that condenser-like sound, it's also got great rear and side noise rejection with the super cardioid pickup pattern. Um, is phantom powered? That's not a problem. I'll get into the interface in just a second, but it's also durable. I can throw this in my Pelican case. I don't have to worry about this. Like if it were a condenser mic in terms of being fragile or, you know, thoughts of it getting broken, that's not a problem. This thing could hammer a nail <laughs> if it needed to. So durable, sounds good, handles the room well. This is the Sennheiser MKH416. Maybe on camera it looks weird to have a shotgun uh, microphone in, in a you know visual setting like this, but acoustically I think it sounds the best. This microphone is going into a Personas Revelator IO24 interface, which you don't really need to see much of it here on camera. I'm going to show you on screen how I have this set up with compression, equalization, and limiting in just a second. I should also tell you that I'm recording all of this with my ATEM Mini Pro, and to get from the interface to this, I go through a hum eliminator. So that's kind of what you're seeing right here, uh, these four patch cables. It brings it from the, from the interface through the hum eliminator to, there is a little bit of buzz when you go from balanced to an unbalanced signal, then unbalanced here into the ATEM Mini Pro. So that is all of the hardware uh, simple as that. I, I love these headphones, by the way, the Biodynamic uh, DT770 Pro. These are the 32-ohm version. I found that these work uh, best with the output of this sp specific audio interface. Okay, let's get into what I'm doing here on the computer, how I make this mic sound good given the environment and given the circumstances. So I have these new 416 settings on the Revelator. And I go into what's called the fat channel here. This is basically, you know, my, my entire signal chain exists right here. And this is the part you want to see. I utilize a high pass filter. I have the gate turned off. I'll show you what it sounds like in a second. I am using EQ and compression in that order. And then I also have a limiter on at the very end of this because I don't want to clip or peak going into the ATEM if I don't have to. So let me begin left to right, and in order of the signal chain. We first go through a high-pass filter at 80 hertz. Now, if I take this off entirely, I do notice it sounds a bit different, like it does. Now, all of a sudden, I feel the lowest frequencies. And if you're listening on headphones, if I really get in here and work the mic, you can probably hear it's very bassy at this point. But as soon as I turn on the high-pass filter, now I'm, I'm working the mic at the same distance and everything, and it doesn't sound as deep or as sub bassy. So 80 hertz is where I have it for this. Um, the gating is off, but let me show you something. Here's room tone. Now listen to this gate. And I'm actually messing with the threshold there a little bit. You can kind of hear the gating, right? And I actually think in this case, it's expansion more than it's gating, but there is a little bit of chatter when I start and stop talking. And I can probably bring this down, but right there at negative 71.44 dB, this sounds pretty good. Now, you heard my breathing, got a little choppy there. That's the nature of a gate to try and block out as much extra noise as possible. I like a gate sometimes in a, in a perfect acoustic environment, but that's not this. So I generally leave it off. But I want you to hear it one more time. Here's no gate. And then there's that expansion. All right, so I'm going to turn that back off. Then I get to the EQ here, and there's a couple different ways you can set this up. Either the standard way, kind of a, a parametric curve, you can do a passive mode or a vintage mode. Um, those don't allow as much flexibility here. I like to just kind of draw out my own curve. And I'll show you what I'm doing here left to right. So um, for this microphone, you know, the 416 has some low-end presence. It's more known for its top-end 
uh, presence than anything else. So on the low end, I am giving it a boost. At 115 hertz, I'm gaining up 3 dB on a 2.34 Q. And again, I can share all these settings with you. It's going to be different for your voice, in your room, in your situation. You know What I'm doing here, you can copy it. I'm not 100% sure that it's going to be optimal for you like I think it might be for me. Because of this curve here, it is taken a little bit out above 100, between 100 and 200. That's great. Kind of narrow down that boxiness. My low mids, I'm actually taking out at 400 hertz, about 3 dB, on a pretty tight cue there of 6.69. Um, now, watch. If I bring this up right here, you can kind of hear, hear that. That's exactly what I'm taking out. I found that resonance frequency right there that I do not want. And I think it was like 305, so I'll bring it right back to there. All right, so that's what I'm doing there. In the high mids, I'm boosting at 4,000 hertz. That's a, a common speech frequency, very intelligible frequency for speech. So 1.45, I'm boosting that just a little bit on a pretty wide Q of 2.34. And then I'm actually up top at 8,000 because this mic is so present. Some might even say sibilant. Um, my sibilance range, I think, is about 6,500 hertz, but I'm actually bypassing that I'm just trying to take down the top end on this mic and tame it a little bit. So at 8,000 hertz, I'm gaining down to 2 dB on a 2.62 Q right there. All right, and then that brings me to after EQ, we'll get into compression, which is already up on the screen. And I'm using the tube compressor here. Again, there are a couple different options. You can do a standard version. You can do a FET compressor, which is supposed to be modeled after like the... 1176, um, but this tube version, it looks just like an LA-2A. And that's what I use in my home studio with the U87. So I've got this dialed in here on limit mode, gain at 58, peak reduction at 60. Let me take myself off the screen for a second. So 58 and 60 are the numbers. The key filter is off. I don't need it keying in on a certain area to compress, to set off the compressor. But generally when I'm talking here, and I mean, you know, it's it's between zero and I'm looking at gain reduction here, zero and maybe minus five, preferably zero and minus three. If I'm living in that area, I'm doing it right. However, if I decide to yell into the mic real loud all of a sudden, you see it slamming at minus 10, but you also see my levels right there, you know, and, and eventually the limiter is doing some of this work too. It's keeping me from clipping and distorting and overmodulating. And then we get to the limiter here. I am keeping it at negative 0.5 dB, so it will never exceed that. I will never clip, no matter what I do here on a live stream. It's just, it's nice and refreshing to know that in this situation, I can get right on the mic, I can yell at it, and I will never actually clip. Okay, so that's all of that. There's one other thing I can show you here. I don't use it, but this, oh, that sounds really good, doesn't it? Uh, this is the current filter I'm using here. <laughs> this is so hard to even listen to. But there's there's different ones, like the vocoder one. Here's vocoder. Oh, that's really, really deep. Here's detuner. Detuner. Or lastly, I'll give you a sense of a doubler. Now, this one I could see myself using just a little bit more. Anyway, uh, those are all settings that you can add onto your vocal chain at the very end. But... Again, I also think it's important for you to hear, like, what would this sound like if I turned everything off? So, and I should have told you, by the way, that my mic is gained up 31 dB. That's my setting for this mic into this interface. Gained up 31 dB, and then it goes through all this. So here's what it sounds like. Basically raw and unprocessed at 31 dB. That compared to this. So now we're back fully processed. And here's how it sounds, again, in a room that is just totally not ready for broadcasting or live streaming at a professional level. So it just goes to show you with the right equipment, you're still not going to get things perfect. I mean, how things sound in my home studio with a U87 and a Universal Audio Apollo Twin X, I'm very satisfied and I've got separate videos on that. But as for this remote streaming setup, how you should do it, what tricks you should use, I'm trying to reduce reflections in this room. I'm trying to EQ this mic properly, not give it too much compression. I want it to sound kind of normal. I'm also talking a little bit closer to the mic, and quite honestly, I could talk a lot quieter. That would reduce some of the reflections in this room, but 
as I talk at a certain volume, I think it sounds pretty good in here. Let me know what you think of this setup, the 416, the Personas Revelator IO24, and obviously I'm going into the A10 Mini Pro for all my recording and streaming, but I would appreciate your feedback. How do you think this sounds? What do you use? And tell me also if some of what I shared here actually helped you. Take care. <laughs>